With Season of the Witch, we got some changes to a couple of exotics across the board, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the Geomake Stabilizers, what got updated, and give you guys a build for them, because honestly, you can get your super back very quickly now. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. So, this is the exotic, this is what they look like. Actually has two ornaments. We have this one, which makes it look a little more techy, and then we have one from last season, which is this one. This one's kind of neat, but in any event, the main thing is the perk, right? So, close enough. Damaging targets with Chaos Reach extends its duration, and then collecting Ionic Traces grants you energy for Chaos Reach. This is completely new, so essentially, as long as you can continue to create a bunch of Ionic Traces, you can get your super back very quickly. Obviously, you want to take advantage of certain things on the Seasonal Artifact. There's really only two which are in the final column, but I am going to be using Arc Weapons, so you can look into the Arc Strand Siphon combo mod if you're going to be using a Strand primary weapon. It's not necessary, and I'm not using it, but it is an option here. The last two, which are going to be in the final column. First up, Monochromatic Maestro. Dealing elemental ability damage increases matching weapon damage, and elemental weapon damage increases matching ability damage. Bonus granted is 10% for 5 seconds. So, if we're trading off with our arc abilities and our arc weapons, we basically get free bonus damage constantly for both of those things. And then lastly, Elemental Embrace. Subclass elemental buffs grant you bonus recovery and damage resistance against combatant attacks of the matching element type. So, when I collect an Ionic Trace, now I get damage resistance for arc automatically with this so that's pretty solid on this build under the storm caller subclass first up for the super obviously we want to use chaos reach to take advantage of the geomags perk and just note as long as you are consistently hitting a boss or targets you can actually increase the super by more than half it's like 120 percent so with the regular chaos reach you pretty much get two chaos reach supers and a little bit more as long as you're hitting a target with this. For our abilities, I'm opting for the Healing Rift. Movement, I like Burst Glide, but you can use what you like. For the melee, I personally like Ball Lightning. Again, I can just toss it out, hover over target. It actually hits three times when you're amplified, which is cool. Or you can do Chain Lightning. Again, either or, it doesn't really matter here. And then for the grenade, I'm opting for the Pulse Grenade. Now for our aspects, first up here is Electrostatic Mind. Defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an Ionic Trace, and then collecting an Ionic Trace makes you amplified. Again, being amplified is going to be a big thing here, and it's very easy to become amplified with what we're going to be doing. For our second aspect, we're going to be using Arc Soul. You're going to cast your Rift, create an Arc Soul that fires at targets in front of you. Allies can pass through the Rift to get an Arc Soul, and your Rift charges faster when allies are near. And while you're amplified, your Arc Souls are supercharged and gain an increased fire rate. For our fragments, we're going to be using Spark Resistance. While you're surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. That is a plus 10 to Strength. Next up, Spark of Amplitude. Rapidly defeating targets while you are amplified creates an orb of power. We're going to be amplified a lot, so the more orbs we can create, the better for us and our teammates. Next, Spark of Magnitude. Your lingering arc grenades have extended duration, which means our pulse grenade will last longer. And then lastly, I personally like Spark of Shock. It gives your arc grenades the jolt factor. So again, that jolt can also create an ionic trace from Electrostatic Mind, as you can remember, and it is a minus 10 to discipline. Going over our armor mods, first up here on the helmet, I'm using Harmonic Siphon, which translates to Arc Siphon. So those rapid arc and final blows will create an orb of power. Next up, Special Ammo Finder. Increased drop chance of special ammo on a kill. This one's going to be very important because we are going to be using two exotic special weapons that are really going to help this build out. And then lastly, Ashes of Assets. Gain bonus super energy on grenade kills. On the gauntlets here, I like Firepower. Your grenade final blows create orbs of power. And then I also like using momentum transfer and impact induction. So when I do damage with my melee and my grenade, it actually does cooldowns for both of those respectively. If you did want to change out one of these for either bolstering detonation or focusing strike, I think that's okay too. So you can get that rift back faster. Basically, as long as you deal damage with the melee or grenade, you get your class ability cooldown faster. So you can pop that rift to get arc souls even faster. If you want to do that, that's fine. But I personally like momentum transfer and impact induction. On the chest piece, I would recommend harmonic reserves, which transfers to arc reserves. So now we have more ammo for our special and heavy weapon, which are both going to be arc. And then you can use whatever resistance mods that you'd like. On the boost here, first up, harmonic scavenger. Again, this translates to arc scavenger. As you can tell, the harmonic mods save a lot of space for your armor mod slot so arc weapons get bonus reserves when picking up ammo used by that weapon so now we can get even more ammo for our special and heavy weapons i do like arc weapon surge again your arc weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge your armor charge not the case over time again you get armor charges by collecting orbs of power minimum you can have three armor charges with any of these blue mods on it makes that armor charge last 10 seconds so we can have 30 seconds of bonus weapon damage if we have three armor charges and then lastly i like recuperation personally replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of power again there's not really a way to heal yourself on this build other than the healing rift so we're going to be creating a lot of orbs anyway we might as well be able to heal ourselves when we go to pick those up 
And then lastly, I personally like Reaper here. After using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns or overpower. And then I am rocking double bomber. Again, reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. So when I pop that rift, I can get that grenade back faster. You can also look into outreach, which does the same thing as bomber, but it cools down your melee energy. If you want to use powerful attraction as well, again, that'll automatically collect nearby orbs when you use your class ability. So any of those orbs around you will give you armor charges, you know, healing back on the boots, all that. You can totally do so. And you can also look into time dilation. I don't think it's necessary with all the orbs we're creating. We're going to have a very long time for that uh, arc weapon damage, but your decaying armor charge has a longer duration. So that 10 seconds I mentioned actually gets bumped up to 15. So if you have three armor charges, that's 45 seconds of that bonus weapon damage. But it's not necessary. For stats to focus on, we talk about it every video. Try to have tier 10 100 resilience. It's going to give you a 30% damage reduction in PvE. Definitely a big thing to have in general. I would also look into discipline. Again, that is tied to the grenade stat. So the faster we have our grenade, the faster we can take advantage of our armor mods and stuff under the subclass. And then lastly, you can definitely look into intellect. Again, getting your super fast here is a big thing. We want to take advantage of geomags as much as possible. So if you want to try to max out your intellect as well, go for it. You can also look into strength, which is tied to your melee ability. But I think the main ones here are resilience and discipline. Now for your weapon options, honestly, for the primary, doesn't really matter what you use, use what you want. Obviously in the heavy, you want to take advantage of any good PVE arc heavy weapon. I have my hothead here. Again, great perks, auto loading, explosive light. Fantastic. Any arc weapon that you have in the heavy slot that's good for PVE, definitely go for it. But under special, I would recommend one of two weapons. Number one being Delicate Tomb here. This thing is fantastic on the Warlock because of all the Ionic Traces. So let's run through it. Fires a wide horizontal spread when shot from the hip. Final blows of the weapon have a chance to generate Ionic Traces and powerful foes and opposing guardians always generate Ionic Traces. Also has Fluted Barrel, Liquid Coils, and then Short Action Stock. Its other trait, Tempest Cascade. Collecting an Ionic Trace overcharges the weapon's next shot, jolting targets on hit. Note, again with Electrostatic Mind, if we defeat a jolted target, that's another Ionic Trace. So, free Ionic Traces pretty much. <laughs> and then for the Catalyst, collecting Ionic Trace partially reloads the magazine from reserves literally easy mode. The second exotic to look into is Cold Heart. Cold Heart got a solid change with its trait perk, but let's just run through it. The weapon shoots a steady cold fusion powered arc laser, dealing more damage the longer it remains on a target. Comes with extended barrel, enhanced battery, and then hand laid stock. Then Longest Winter per periodically generates Onic Traces while it's in its high damage state. So if you're already shooting this weapon and you just consistently keep shooting it, you get kills with it, that's free Onic Traces with this weapon, just absolutely ridiculous. And then for the catalyst, it just gives a bump to stability and reload speed. Now, if you got through all that and you're still a little confused about how this build works, I'm gonna run it down for you. But essentially, we wanna create ionic traces, we wanna create orbs of power to get our super as quickly as possible so we can use our pretty much enhanced, like twice as long lasting chaos reach super on enemies. So let's say we're about to go into an engagement. What is gonna happen? Well, first thing we wanna create ionic traces so we can become amplified. And again, with electrostatic mind, as long as we defeat targets with our abilities or a target that is jolted or blinded, it's gonna create that ionic trace. And then once we collect it, we become amplified. And again, with our pulse grenade, it also has jolt on it because of spark of shock. So there's another chance to create an ionic trace. It's gonna be very easy to become you know, <laughs> amplified. And if we wanted to use our arc soul as well, again, we can pop that healing rift. The arc soul can spawn uh, ionic traces as well so keep that in mind so even if you are out of the rift and the arc soul is with you just floating around every target you kill with arc soul still has the potential to drop ionic traces as well so it's pretty much free <laughs> once those ionic traces are created with everything under the subclass i will see spark of resistance again we're going to be surrounded by combatants we basically get more damage resistance once we're amplified with spark of amplitude we are going to be creating even more orbs of power for us and our teammates again with spark of magnitude our grenade's going to last longer. With Delicate Tomb, again, we can create Ionic Traces from getting kills with the weapon, or once we collect Ionic Trace, now we get free Jolt from the weapon, which is automatically going to create an Ionic Trace. It's going to be really good for crowd control, or if we want to use Cold Heart, you know, we're just cooking targets with it. We can create even more Ionic Traces with that. We also have that option as well. And then everything else on the armor mods is just a bonus. Again, Arc Siphon, we're going to be getting rapid kills with Arc Weapons anyway. Might as well create Orbs of Power. We have Special Ammo Finder, so we never run out of Special Ammo. Ash of the Assets, again, we're going to be using our Grenade a lot, so we might as well give ourselves even more Super Energy. Again, on the Gauntlets with Firepower, we get a kill with the Grenade. That's a free Orb of Power. Impact Induction, Momentum Transfer. Anytime we use our Melee and Grenade, we get cooldowns for both of those abilities. On the Boots here, any Orb of Power we pick up heals us and 
<laughs> obviously we get armor charges from orbs of power so we have arc weapon surge almost constantly and with arc scavenger that special ammo that we do pick up gives us even more ammo which again makes sure we don't run out again we also have reaper so when we pop the healing rift to get the arc soul that's a free orb of power once we get a weapon kill and we get even more grenade energy because of double bomber again the main thing is we want to create ionic traces and orbs of power to get the super and once we do Geomech Stabilizers is going to allow our Chaos Reach to pretty much last twice as long, a little longer than that. If there's a boss or a high value target, mini boss, whatever, and you just want to cook them, start using the super. It's going to last a very long time. If you want to use it for ad control, that's totally fine. As long as you're hitting targets, again, you still get uh, super energy back while you're using it, so keep that in mind. But again, the main thing is being able to have a super almost constantly is just freaking insane. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my updated Geo Meg Stabilizers Arc Warlock build. I'm gonna put the dim link for this build in the description. So if we wanna copy everything that I'm using under the subclass, the armor mods, even the drip, if you would like. Some people are asking me about, you know, copying shaders and stuff like that. Again, that will be in that link. And test off for yourself and then let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, is there something that you like under the subclass, armor mods, a certain weapon that you like using with this build as well? Definitely let me know. I'm testing stuff out in this game. All the time. In any event, if what you saw was valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then turn that bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on another build video here on the channel. If you didn't know, we actually stream live on YouTube and also on Kick. That link will be in the description. Again, YouTube is mainly for Destiny 2 content and Kick us for a little more variety. We are going to be playing a lot of Destiny 2, PvE, PvP, you know, Crotazen, raid helps, dungeon stuff, whatever it is. Again, if you want to hop in for that, just hop in the chat. We'll figure something out. And if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. Again, people are looking to play Destiny 2 together. We have ways to create voice chats in there and whatnot. But we also have people talking about other games, PC tech, anime, and more. Lastly, if you want to support the channel even more, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription. Again, you're going to gain access to the exclusive emotes, the monthly badges, and other cool stuff here that can be used on the live stream and in the comments. So if you would like more information, all you need to do is press the join button next subscribe, and that will give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Shoo!